Hello everyone. This hour on Verbling, the part three in my Learning Through Pictures series. This is A Perfect Day for Banana Fish, our story by J.D. Salinger. We're going to be doing the exciting conclusion of A Perfect Day for Banana Fish in just a minute. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off and I'll do a, a quick review of the plot and the characters that we've met in the very beginning of class. By the way, a quick word about me. I'm John Merrick, your verbling teacher for this hour, and I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, three quick rules to help you participate in my class. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up, which means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking, tune in to the new words that you learn, and use them actively. And rule three, open up, relax and have fun, we're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. So we're going to get started. I just want to do a quick, quick, quick review in case you're tuning in for the first time right now. Hang on just a second. Give me just a minute here because I have to turn this camera off, turn the camera on, and go back to my notes. Okay. So far, we've encountered the Glass family. Um, uh, in in the, the first hour, we began the, the story, A Perfect Day for Banana Fish. I talked a little bit about um, the author, J.D. Salinger, and a bit about the story. It takes place in 1948 at a resort in Florida. And in the beginning, we encounter Muriel Glass, um, the wife of Seymour Glass, who we see too. <clears throat> she gets an hysterical phone call from her mother. She places the call to let her mother know that she was okay. Finally, when the lines are free, her mother calls or returns the call, and she's kind of hysterical. She's worried about her daughter. And a long conversation ensues where the mother uh, keeps suggesting and giving details about her husband, Seymour, that are disturbing. She's worried that he's going to lose his mind, that he's crazy. Apparently, he's just gotten back from his service in World War II, and he's not the same. He's acting unstable, unpredictable, and he's not able to function in a social environment. And we know this particularly because of the second scene. The second scene takes place on a beach outside the hotel where there's a little girl named She's waiting there while her mother puts sunblock on her back. And she says the words, see, excuse me, see more glass. She's so young, she doesn't understand that his name is Seymour, that is to say S-E-Y-M-O-U-R. She thinks it's see more glass, glass like a glass of water. So she's obviously very young. The girl keeps repeating this over and over again. Uh, her mother has no idea what she's talking about and finally leaves her on the beach alone for her to go and get a drink. She's going to get a cocktail at the bar. So Mrs. Carpenter lets the little girl run off to play. Sybil runs to a deserted part of the beach to find Seymour, with whom she's apparently struck up a friendship during her stay at the hotel. Seymour is obviously wonderful with children. He jokes around with Sybil and she's clearly enamored with him. In the last part, in the last hour, we read up to the point where the two of them head out into the ocean together. Seymour explains to Sybil all about banana fish. They're normal little fish. Oh no, we didn't get to that part. He, he, we got to the part where he suggests that they go catch banana fish. And that's actually where we stopped. So that's where we're going to be picking up right now. Um, so that's a little bit about where we are with the story. What else do I want to say? And Oh, and just a quick word of advice here. In these Hangouts, it's not always possible uh, for the teacher to see the Verbling chat window or even to see the screen. Just want to say that because if there's anything you want to say, it's probably better to tell me directly uh, because I may not see it until the end of the class. So just so you know, especially if I'm sharing my screen, my screen might be blocked. Okay, so if there's anything you want to say, just speak up. All right, so 
we're going to pick this up right now. Hang on just one second here. We left off here. Uh, hold on, my screen share isn't working. Give me a second. There we go. So, Aka, you are the sole survivor. <laughs> Everyone else has <laughs> disappeared. You. It's just you Thank and you me. For extra time. Are you there, Aka? <laughs> yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Maybe, maybe, maybe you Yuki will be on his way back as well. Maybe. I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Yes, I hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay. So, we're going to finish the story and hopefully uh, others will join mm -hmm. us. And I was just saying, okay. you can all try to write in the chat window if you're watching, but I can't guarantee that I'm going to see it because I'm sharing my screen. It's, it's often blocked. But uh -huh. let's try it. So, Aka, okay. why don't you pick up where we left off? Uh, Sybil and Seymour were just about to head into the into the water. Mm -hmm, okay, and uh, sh sh should I read uh, from Sybil was silent? Uh, can you see on the screen what says? Yes, I see the screen, and I see the sentence. Okay. Sybil was silent. Or start starting from here. Do you see the sentence in blue? Oh, uh, which sentence? You mean you mean a text of this of this uh, novel, a short story? I yeah. see the short story. Yeah. Do you see the sentence that I highlighted in blue? Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> sorry, sorry for my listening. Yes. Uh, okay. Don't let go. Sibyl ordered. You hold me now. Miss Carpenter, please, I know my business. Uh, the young man said, you just keep your eyes open for any banana fish. This is perf a perfect day for banana fish. I don't see any, Sibyl said. That's understandable. Their habits are very peculiar. Wait a second. This is the most difficult word in the English language. Again, uh, peculiar. Sorry? <laughs> uh, can you say it again? <laughs> Peculiar, peculiar, peculiar. Yeah, you've got to get that. Peculiar, peculiar, peculiar. That's it. Peculiar. Good. And he kept pushing the float. Uh, the water was not quite up to his chest. Uh, they lead a very tragic life, he said. You know what they do, Seville? Uh, she shook her head. Well, uh, they swim into a hole where there's a lot of bananas. They are very ordinary looking fish, fish when they swim in. But once they get in, they, ben uh, they, be they behave like pigs. Why? I've known some banana fish um, uh, to, <laughs> to swim. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, there, okay. Banana hole and eat as many as sev seven seventy-eight bananas. He ate the float, and it, it's a passenger a float a uh, passenger a foot closer to the natural. Oh wait 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 hold on wait you can't see all the text. A foot closer to the horizon. To sorry. the horizon. The text is not perfect. Sorry okay. sorry about that. So he edged the float and its passenger. One foot closer to the horizon, so they're they're walking out into the ocean, and she's on the float. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry. Naturally, after that, they're so far so fat, they can't get out of the hole again. Can't fit through the door. Not too far out, Sibyl said. What happens to them? What happens to the banana fish? Oh, you mean after they eat so many bananas, they can't get out of the banana holes? Uh, yes, said Sibyl. Well, I hate to tell you, Sibyl, they die. Why? asked Sibyl. Well, they get banana, uh, banana fever. It's a terrible <laughs> disease. Here comes a wave, Sibyl said nervously. 
We'll, ign we'll ignore it. We'll snub it, said the young man. Two snubs. He took Sybil's uh, ankle, ankles in his hands and pressed down and forward. The float nosed over the top of the wave. The water soaked Sybil's blonde hair, but her scream was full of pleasure. With her hand, wh when the float was uh, level again, she wiped away a flag wet band of hair from her eyes and reported, I just saw, saw one. So wet, my love, a banana fish. My God, now, said the young man. Did, see, did he have any banana, bananas in his mouth? Yes, said Sibyl. Six. The young man suddenly picked up one of Sibyl's wet feet, which were dropping over the end of the float and kissed the arch. Hey, said the owner of the foot, turning around. Hey, young, yourself, uh, we are going to now, uh, go, going in now. You had enough? No. Sorry, he said, pushed the float toward shore until uh, Sybil got, got off it. He carried it the rest of the way. Goodbye, said Sybil, and ran without a regret, a re a regret in the direction to, of the hotel. Okay. Let's take a little breather there. This is this is the end of the second scene. What is a banana fish? <laughs> uh, kind of, they are eating a lot of fish, a uh, lot of bananas in the hole, inside yeah. the hole, and uh, as a result, they maybe they became fat and they couldn't get from the hole, and they would die. It's it's a very tragic thing, the life of a banana yeah. fish. It's very tragic. Mm -hmm. And you know all of those underwater bananas out there in Florida. There's a lot of bananas. Oh, I see. Actually, the bananas is on the ocean. Oh, I see. So, this is Yuki here. What's that? Yeah, yeah Yuki uh, has joined us. Yuki, uh, you're back. We were worried. We were, we were worried. So, we learned about banana fish. I don't know if you were listening. We learned about banana fish. They, they see a banana fish, they go hunting for a banana fish, she sees a banana fish, it's got six bananas, and it's a very tragic thing because it's going to keep eating more and more and more <laughs> until it really gets banana fever. So this is a very tragic moment, the life of a banana fish. And notice the ending too, Aka, the last thing you read, Sybil ran without regret in the direction of the hotel. Mm. So. There's that, there's, that, there's that line, and then there's that line earlier. Remember the other one you read? The water soaked Sybil's blonde hair, but her scream was full of pleasure. Those two lines stand out for me. What do they say about Sybil? Aka, what do they say about Sybil? Mm, in that web part, I thought Sybil like Slayer. Liked what? Sorry. Like thrill. Liked the the thrill, uh, kind of sensation. The feeling of the of the water. Is yeah, and she 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 uh, she's feeling thrill. So Thr uh, thrilled. Yeah. Thrilled. 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 Okay, thrilled. I didn't understand the word. Sorry. Thrilled. Yeah. By the way, I can't see the chat window. So if you write, oh, I, see. I, I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's thrilled, mm -hmm. and she's the she's this. There's a there's an interesting moment here, right? Those two lines stand out for me, but mostly because of the line in the middle. It's kind of like a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> in, you, on on one side of the sandwich, you have the, yeah, like a sandwich. I mean, like a sandwich. This on on the top of the sandwich, you have the line. The water soaked Sybil's blonde hair, but her scream was full of pleasure. At the other end of the sandwich, you have goodbye, Sybil said, and ran without regret in the direction of the hotel. In the middle of the sandwich, you have this different line, which is the most significant line in the entire story, in my opinion. Without this line, the story would not have the same meaning. The line is, the young man suddenly picked up one of Sybil's wet feet. Remember, Sybil said, I just saw a banana fish. 
The young man picked up one of Sybil's wet feet, which were drooping over the edge of the float, and he kissed the arch. The arch is the curved part of your foot that's very ticklish and sensitive. Hey, said the owner of the foot, turning around. So, I can't help but think that this is the, uh, the description of a love affair. Because Sybil says goodbye, but she has no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like they've had a kind of affair. They have their moment, and then she runs off with no regrets. Um, but that's not to say it isn't a real love affair. He says, saw so what, my love? So, we get the sandwich is because on both sides of the sandwich we have this picture of innocence, real innocence. Um, also the way she runs off. And in the middle we have the man expressing real affection. Um, and it's all very innocent. So it's like this little sandwich and it ends uh, the second part of the story. Because I, I think this is where the third part picks up. By the way, Let's say a quick hello to Ali, who joined us a little late. Hi, Ali. How are you? Ali, are you there? Going one. Ali, you got to turn your microphone on, which is at the top of the screen. Yes, there you Mr. Go. John. Yeah, Hi. this is Ali. Hello, Ali. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? How's it going? Yeah, it's going all right. I'm sorry <laughs> for that. <laughs> Uh, we're getting. We're we're just finishing the second part of a three-part story. Um, so far, in part one, we met a woman who's on the telephone with her mother. Her mother's kind of hysterical, but she's worried about the mental health of the woman's husband. And we get this picture of her, a picture of him that he's crazy. We just read part two, and when we meet the man, he's on the beach, and he doesn't seem crazy at all. And he has this very innocent flirtation with this young girl who's about four years old. And her, the girl's mother goes off to get a cocktail at the bar. She goes off to drink. And he takes care of her and takes her out in the ocean and plays a game with her and jokes with her. And they know each other because he plays, apparently, they met before at the hotel. So that's what we've been reading so far, just so you know more or less what's going on. Okay? So just so you know more or less what's going on, Ali. So we're going to pick up on the last part of the story now. Um, okay, so we ended with... Let me just make sure I get to the right part. Um, da, da, da. Whoops, I think I went to the wrong page. Hold on one second. I think you're going to the bottom. Okay. Third. Yeah, 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 there we are. So, uh, sorry, who reads after Akka? Ahmed, is, are you next? Uh, okay, if you want me. Uh, yes. yes, go for it. Okay. The young man put on his robe, closed the la lapels, lapel, lapel, lapels tight, and jammed his towel into his pocket. He picked up the, sl the slimy, wet, cumber cumbersome. cumbersome float and put it under his arm. He plodded alone through the soft, hot sand toward the hotel. On the sub-main floor of the hotel, <clears throat> which the management directed bothers to use, a woman with zinc salve, or salve, I don't know, on her nose. S salve. Sal salve, okay. On her nose, got into the elevator with the young man. I see... You are looking at my feet, he said to her when the car was in motion. I beg your pardon, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, said the woman. Uh, I said, I see you are looking at my feet. I beg your pardon, I happened, I happened to be looking at the floor, said the woman, and faced the doors of the car. If you want to look at my feet, say so, said the young man. But don't be a goddamned sneak about it. Let me out <laughs> here. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a normal conversation when you're in the elevator, right? <laughs> I don't know. I never uh, came across something like this before. <laughs> Let me out here. And, and just, a, 
just a question. She's got zinc salve on her nose. Uh, you know, people who are really afraid of the sun or people who really can't have sun, they put zinc on their face. So they look like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. They, they've got like <laughs> silver. So this is some old woman with zinc on her face. She looks like a robot. And um, I guess he doesn't like the way she looks. And so he picks a fight with her. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're looking at my feet. I beg your pardon. I happen to be looking at the floor. You know, and then he accuses her of being a sneak. I have no idea what's wrong with his feet, but apparently it's a big issue to him. <laughs> All right. Uh, just a second here. Um, uh, I'm, Ahmed, I'm going to switch it over to Yuki just yeah, because fine, yeah. we've got, we're have got we almost at the end of the story. Yeah, so yeah everyone, I can that as well. Yeah. Go for it, Yuki. I think oh. we are, don't be sneak about it, so we are here. I think, okay. Let, let me out here, please. The, the, woman, the woman said quickly to girl, girl opening, the, opening the car. The car door was opened, and the woman go, got out without looking back. I have two normal feet, and, and I can't see the slightest good damned reason why any, anybody should stare at them, said the young man. Five, please. He took his room, room key out of his rope, rope pocket. He got, uh, got off at the five, fifth, door, fifth floor walked down the hall and let himself into 507. The room smelled of new calfskin luggage and nail lacquer remover. He glanced, he glanced at the girl lying asleep on one of the twin beds. Then he went over to one of the pieces of luggage, opened it, opened it and from and from under a and from under a pile of sh shorts and under sh shirt, he he took out at uh, orgies. Or orgies, I don't know. Orgies cali caliber seven point sixty five automatic. He released the ma magazine, looked at it, oh, oh. then. The insert it, it, he cooked the piece. Oy, oy, oy. Then he went <laughs> over the sat down on the unoccupied twin bed, looked at the girl, yeah. aimed the piece, and fired the bullet through his right temple. Oh, what kind of story? Oh, suddenly, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it's the end of the story? Yep. Really? Really. What <laughs> <laughs> it's an unexpected ending. Totally. Let me ask you this question. Hang on. Before I've got some discussion questions for you, but let me ask you this question. He Why was himself, yeah. he shot himself in the head? <laughs> Tell me something. Why was this a perfect day for banana fish? <laughs> That's the title of the story. That's a difficult question you're asking. Why is this a perfect day for banana fish? The original title of the story was a little different. The original title was It's a Fine Day for Banana Fish. And I don't remember who changed the title, but they changed it to A Perfect Day. And I think it was a good decision. Why is this a perfect day? for banana fish, and not just a fine day. What do you think about that? Any opinions? Aka, Ahmed, Yuki, Ali, any opinions? Ali, I know, I, you, I know you didn't hear the whole story. No idea. <laughs> Go ahead, Ahmed. Uh, probably because banana fish, um, I mean, will end uh, dying after eating, eating, eating. That's true. He tells yeah. that story, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, killed, so he killed himself, so he ended the story. <laughs> it's true. There's a parallel between the story he tells the girl, Sybil, and oh. the story that he's living, 
so that's true. But I felt, uh, you know, that that sandwich part, you know, the yeah. he kicked uh, that girl. Yeah. And the uh, reason why I think, you know, girl saw the banana fish, which he saw the yeah. same thing. He usually children, you know, uh, imagine such kind of magical figure or kind of in their imagination. So they are sense, uh, synthesized at that time. So exactly. He, yeah. He he find the person who really understood his feeling, but that innocent person left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Regret. So he disappointed. Maybe he reflect him he, him innocent himself to the girl, but the girl left. So he lost his innocence. He, maybe he cling to or he, you know, to his innocence or is a kind of very important thing he lost. I think so too. I, that's why I call that a kind of a sandwich because you've got this picture of innocence at the beginning and the end. And there's the line where he kisses the arches of her feet. But why does he do that? You know, he's not a, he's not a monster. He's not a pervert. <laughs> Why the affection at that moment? And the, and I think Aka, I think you're right. It's the moment where she she sees the thing that he's been describing. She says she sees it, and they have this moment where they're on the same page, right? They they both are living the same dream. Um, mm. And I think that's why it's a perfect day for banana fish because I mean I don't want to tell you what to think, but I wonder if he thinks he'll ever find another moment as perfect as that moment. I wonder. Because what happens afterwards? He's on the elevator and he sees this rich, snobby old windbag and he puts her in her place. <laughs> he maybe he realizes that he that he just cannot live with adults, that he can't stand mm. The sneakiness, he can't stand the phoniness and the hypocrisy wearing zinc looking like a clown. You know, <clears throat> maybe he has a realization after that moment. I don't know, but I wonder if that's why, because I think, uh, I think that there must be a reason why it's a perfect day, because my, my feeling is that he lived a perfect moment and he thinks he's never going to find it again. I, that's my feeling. What do you think? Mm, probably, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, pro probably because you know he enjoyed every single moment with that girl, like he ate, ate, ate a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. He, he, he didn't enjoy the every moment with with the girl. Maybe that's uh -huh. why she she he he committed suicide in the end. Well, what do you mean? What no, you I, I, I mean the girl uh, on the float, on the beach, the little girl, not his, oh. not his wife. Yeah, with his wife, we don't know what's going on. We have to guess. Ah, wife. With his wife, we don't really know. What, what, we... Go ahead, Yuki. What, 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 what his wife is doing after that, there, there is no, no description about what, what is it. What his wife is doing. <laughs> uh, Only the first part of the story. No, no, no. The, we have a little description. Only the first part of. We have a little description. Yeah. Yeah. When he gets off the elevator, it says. He got off at the fifth floor, walked down the hall, and let himself into room 507. The uh -huh. room smelled of new calfskin uh -huh. luggage and nail lacquer remover, because she was painting her nails. He glanced at the girl lying asleep on one of the twin beds. Well, there's two important details here. First, the girl is asleep, so she doesn't see what he's doing. Second, they're in twin beds. That means they're not sleeping together. Uh, even for 1948, I'm sure that it was a bit unusual. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I think married people tended to sleep together. I mean, maybe I'm crazy. Uh, and then he went over to his luggage and took out his gun. So it seems clear from the from the nail lacquer remover, it seems clear that it's his wife who was painting her nails or taking off the lacquer from the beginning 
Because when we found her, she was doing something with her nails. So it's clear that it's her, I think. So, but you're right. We don't know much about her. Yeah. There is no dialogue, you know, between him and her. Yeah. So yes, yes. in the end, so he her existence is almost like the object. Exactly. No, no relation. And and why do you think she's she's this object? Why do you think that is? I mean, she could have been described in any way possible. Why do you think she's? I mean, she's not quite an object in the beginning, but at the end, she's literally an object. You're right. He literally sees her on top of the bed like anything else, like the calfskin luggage, right? She's just an object on the bed like everything else. Why do you think she's described that way, Aka? Mm, I, uh, it, it, this reminds me uh, kind of the Doors song called Break, Break On Through To The Other Side. Really? <laughs> how, 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 so? Other side. how so? <laughs> because, you know, as her wife is adult, maybe she's enjoying, uh, he, she's you know, in, on somewhat uh, some content, in order to grow up, we need we have to oppress or forget our innocence. Right. So, but he try to keep that innocence. He clings it. Mm -hmm. So now she and her, I don't know, he and her, is living in a different world. That's true. They definitely are living in a different world for sure. But what is the other side? Are you talking about his suicide? Yeah, because like Jim Morrison, you know, probably because in the end he he shot the gun, he, he shot himself. In but front in, of his wife. In front of his wife. Yeah. Well, his wife is sleeping, but I'm sure she woke up. Yes. But in the but in the song. Ah uh, no no song just just a kind of a, reminds oh. me of the title break oh, okay. through the to the other side. You know, if you go to the other side, maybe you it's very uh, difficult to see the different world from I think this world to the other side. I yeah. I think I think it's the opposite of the song. I think in the song you have to break out of your complacency, and in the story he's already on the other side. He's trying to break. Back through to the normal world, and he feels like he can't. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And he has this this moment of, he probably can't talk to his wife, but he has this moment of, like you said earlier. I think what you said is perfect. He's this moment of synergy with this with this little girl. Hmm. Maybe he went to the other side. Have already been to the other side. So, so that's why he was treated as a mentor. You know. Patients. And, and considering that this is 1948, what do you think the other side mm. would be? What did he experience? I mean, especially... Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. nowadays we call it post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm. But no, back... Of the war. Mm. Right, right. But back then they didn't have a name for it. They, they called it yeah. shell-shocked. Shell like as if a bomb goes off near you and you're in shock, but they didn't recognize it as a legitimate uh, physiological disease, but it is. So probably he's got post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, probably. He doesn't know what it is. He feels superior to everyone else because he's not a fake. Like that's the impression I get. He looks around at the at the at the stupid woman in the elevator who's staring at him funny, and he knows it, and she's not going to admit it, but he calls her out on it because he can't really control himself, and he's reading German poetry. Well, the best po 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 what do you call it? The best poetry or the best writer in the history of the world or something. So I imagine he's talking about Goethe. Because um, he understands, he, he's fighting the Germans, but he understands German, so he can read in German. So he's taught himself. He's got an education, and he's. Mm. I, I think that's. I just have a feeling it's not any poet. I think he's talking about, you know, Enlightenment era classic writing. Um, I but I could be wrong. But it's just my feeling. So he already ha He's already kind of separated from everyone else because he's got something that they they don't. But now he's living with this trauma. I've got a few discussion questions for you, too. The first one was, why is this a perfect day? And I told you my theory. Um, but hang on just one second. Uh, 
some of these you probably can't answer because I was going to say how is Seymour similar to Holden Caulfield but if you don't know Catcher in the Rye you can't answer that one hang on a second um, look at question number three there are a number of references to other writers and literary works in A Perfect Day for Banana Fish um, how do these other works or authors inform and comment on the story that was one question. Did you notice any literary allusions? There's, there's two things that strike me. There's some literary allusions, and also question number five is about numbers. Just like Nabokov's story, numbers are very important in this story. They're, they seem like they're not random. But I don't really know what they mean. I just notice that they're there. So those are my two questions. Did you notice literary allusions, and did you notice the, the use of numbers? And do you have any theory about what they may mean? Mm, I, I, I didn't find a, um, um, a, a parent, I, I didn't find a um, number, uh, mm -hmm. mysterious number here, uh, um, on comparison with the number of the novels. Um, right. Uh, although there is some, there is some, some number to risk in this story. For example, room number 507, uh, this name is uh, appeared in the first of the story and the end of the story. Um, yeah, and, and story. Seven, 765, the caliber yes. of his gun. Yes. And six bananas six with the banana fish. Banana. Yeah. Yes, such a number. And very, uh, it is very symbolized that 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 the story is began from from the scene of the room where where wife uh, lives alone, and in the end of the story, uh, wife and uh, husband together, but husband uh, commit a suicide, uh, shoot himself. So so it, it same. Mm, it 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 a uh, story takes place in the same room, but the situation is completely different. Mm. And uh, I don't I don't know what 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 this number means. I have no idea either. I just mm. noticed them. I I also want <clears throat> I made a list of of illusions. Of literary illusions, uh, but I don't see where it is. I want to see if I can find it for you. Did anyone notice any references to other literary works or any? Uh, because uh, I not a literary work. I know the one rock, uh, Japanese rock musician released the album, the same title, in Japanese. Why what was that? Uh, was like the Japanese rock musician released the album or song. I the did. Same title of this. Who was the musician? Uh, Moto Harusano. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you should. Can, can well, you, you are can, still young. Why you, do you know such a. No, could you, <laughs> such a old could you write the name in the chat window so I can look it up yes, on YouTube? Moto Harusano. Moto Harusano, for oh, a long time, she, she's a musician and a song, song, songwriter. Mm -hmm. She's very famous in Japan. And he likes Beatnik. Beatnik. So he likes uh, uh, a Salinger. Yeah, probably. Probably he likes Salinger. I'll look it up. I'm, I'm just trying to see if I can figure out where I put my notes because I made a list of <clears throat> I made a list of references to other literary works, but I don't know where I put them and I can't see them now. <laughs> <laughs> I made a whole list and it's gone. I don't know where I put it. Uh, maybe it's under themes. Well, I'm going to keep looking for it, and I'll share it with you if I can find it. But um, what do you think this story has to say about some of the big themes? Innocence is a theme. What else do you think is a theme in this story besides innocence? I mean, innocence for sure. What are some other big themes that you notice in the story? I noticed that uh, uh, Ahmed said uh, he enjoyed the the last moment with uh, with the girl, and mm -hmm. after that he shoot she shot himself. Mm -hmm. Maybe Ahmad is right. What is said, Ahmad is right. He uh, he 
he enjoyed the moment with girl. After that, he, um, he, um, he finished his life. So maybe it is connected to the title, A Perfect Day for Banana Fish. Maybe mm -hmm. Banana Fish is a metaphor of, of protagonist of this story. Um, and the perfect day for, for him, maybe, a very, uh, spending a very innocent time with the little girl. After mm -hmm. that, he, he returned to the uh, real, real world with his wife in the room, but he refused to spend the time, spending the time with right. his wife, and he selected death. So maybe su such a such a way of life mm -hmm. day in this his last day is for him. He's a, it's a perfect day for exactly, him. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe and also very, very pure. <laughs> And look at the moment when, and look at the moment when he leaves. If you go back to the story, he kisses the arch of her foot, and then he says, uh, "We're going in now. You had enough. He, you had enough." And she says, "No." But he cuts it off, and he says, and he says, and he he brings her into shore. Yeah. Sorry, he <laughs> said. He pushed the float towards the shore. Sybil got off. He carried it the rest of the way. Goodbye. She ran away without regret. Um, he's the one who cut off the relationship after he kisses her foot. So they're playing in the waves. They're joking around. Everything is fine. And then suddenly, Seymour decides to leave. It seems to me that that's the moment when he decides to end his life. It's the moment he kisses her foot. Because after that, he brings her into shore, and it's over. It's like he doesn't want to. He, it's the perfect moment, and it's done. And from that moment on, he goes directly to the room and ends it. So, I think we get a. I think that's what happens in that moment, or at least I don't understand why he decides. Why doesn't he stay out with her more? She wants to stay. There must be a reason. So it's also a moment there that I think is kind of poignant. That's a very loaded scene. Just another point. Question, please. Sorry. Question, please. <clears throat> I have a question. Go for it. Yeah. Um, uh, in that line, when uh, the little girl said, uh, "I just saw saw one." Right. Uh, <laughs> did she did she mean uh, her feet in the water? No, no. She she says a banana fish, right? It, or he he's he says a banana fish, and then she's agreeing with him. Yeah, because what happened here, because uh, he said a banana fish, then he said, um, did uh, he have any bananas in his mouth? Yes, said Sybil, six, okay? Right. Yeah. The young man suddenly picked up one of Sybil's wet feet. That means she saw uh, her feet in the water. No, 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 no. And she said... That? Really? No, no. Why do you think that? I don't know. No, because... But he he says, "Saw what, my love?" She says, "A banana fish." I saw a banana fish. She says that line. Yeah. So she's talking about that. Why? You mean she saw her feet and she yeah, thought it was a banana fish? Yes. Ah, yeah. Okay, I see. <laughs> and, uh, what happened here? Because okay. he said, uh, like uh, he uh, he like uh, oh, how <laughs> yeah, he uh, he uh, in this at this moment uh, he. Uh, felt that she is lying. Oh, I see. I read but, it a different way. Yeah, but before, probably, uh, she was innocent. I mean, she uh, kept uh, telling uh, the truth every single time, but at this moment, like, she lied. Or, probably. well, but you can read it both ways. Maybe you're right. Maybe and, she... And instead, for example, of saying uh, she's, uh, she saw uh, uh, five... Uh, Toes, for, for example, like right. uh, five bananas, he said six. Right. So he realized here that probably uh, hmm. he's a liar, so that's why he, he doesn't like uh, liar people or something like that. You might have a, you might have a point. <laughs> I don't know, really, because he mentioned before, uh, banana fish uh, is a fish that looks normal, but the time of eating or getting in that hole, they become pigs. Right, right, they right. Change, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, like so it's it, it's like a it's like a metaphor for how he feels about people that they they they're fine until they get something they want and they can't stop. Like there's this change that happens with people, and he's disgusted by them. Yeah, they are hypocritic, you know. Hypocrites. Maybe That's he he don't point. like hypocrites. He don't like telling a lie. I think he want to be a pure. And his wife is uh, opposite of his uh, ideal. Uh, his wife is sound. His wife sounds secular, but mm -hmm. sounds wa worldly, very earthly. M mater you mean materialistic? Material. material yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, the girl, little girl, is pure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, innocent. So he want to be uh, innocent. Uh, that's why he he like to read uh, German poet poetry. Mm -hmm. Although he German, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, in the, uh, in the and, war. And, and 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 also the fact that everyone else is going to be against anything German, mm -hmm. but he's risen above it too. Yes. You know, like he knows better. I the, the, think. Sorry. I think he saw he saw the very very dirty side of human the human being in the war, um, so he he want to be pure he 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 prefer to be pu pure uh, reading uh, poetry German right. poetry uh, German poetry is well known as a ideal ideal idealistic world uh -huh. ideal. Uh, idealistic. Idealistic. <laughs> so it's a symbol of uh, his prefer, preferring. Mm -hmm. so that's why he want he want to be be pure, uh, continue to be, be pure even he even he go to the another world. So that's why he he cleared his life in the end, maybe. Yeah, I'm I'm still I'm still stuck on on Ahmed's point <laughs> because I never thought about that before too. I don't know really. Is it but right saying, or wrong? Yeah. No, no, but just just uh, just something I never thought of that maybe she sees her feet. I'm still stuck on that because I'm still thinking about that it, because I just want to make one point about that. Your interpretation. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump back to Ahmed Yuki I, I want to talk about that too but just one point before I forget just because she sees her feet it doesn't mean that she's lying though like she could see you could read it that she sees her feet she, she got her head in the water she sees her feet and she mistakes them for banana fish yeah, or probably, yeah. or she sees her feet that reminds her of a banana fish she says I see banana fish she's lying and if she is lying, that doesn't that doesn't mean that. But I see what you're saying. You're saying that 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 there's a parallel story. There's a metaphor, and that he recognizes in her that fundamental dishonesty in human beings. And the moment he sees it, he has to end this flirtation because he doesn't want to be reminded of what all people will do eventually, probably himself included. But I'm just wondering if you could read it both ways. On one hand, she could be lying and he sees this ugly part in this innocent creature, or that she's so innocent that the lie is part of this wonderful fantasy that he's created, and she gets him, and no one else gets him. So you could, you could read it in both ways. Yeah, kind of, it's a kind of art piece, so it can be interpreted, you know, you know that a lot different interpretation. That's how abstract work works. You know, it could yeah, be. Both, yeah, interpretation, yes, uh, yeah, makes sense to me. Just, no. just one more, one more point here. What do you think about the use of? Uh, we didn't talk too much about numbers, but did you notice the use of color? Color seems kind of important as well. Mm. Just curious if you notice anything about color. The banana fish are obviously yellow, right? <laughs> color, color, using in this story is quite bright. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. It's uh, like pop art. Yeah, like pop art. It's yeah, kind of so a pop too. art. Yes, like a pop art. Yes. Sir. Um, yes. And do you, do you, did you notice something? What color is Seymour wearing? Do you remember? 
ripped? Well, his swimming trunks are blue. <laughs> Sybil is wearing what color bathing suit? Do you remember? White. White. No, 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 no. Remember in the description, she's got a two-piece yellow bathing suit. So, you're right about the pop art. It's very bright colors. His oh, swimming God. chunks are blue. She's wearing yellow. Seymour says to her, that's a fine bathing suit you have on. If there's one thing I like, it's a blue bathing suit. And she's like, it's not blue, it's yellow, right? But what does blue mean? On a deeper level, this is a work of art. What does blue represent? They're also in the water, too. What does water and blue tend to represent? What do you think? Usually blue represents, you know, depression or, you know, feeling blue. If you're feeling blue, right. If you're feeling that way. But if you're in water... Clarity. 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 And also, and also think about... Um, Think about like a, I don't know, like a famous movie, like, um, I don't know. Think about Psycho by Alfred Hitchcock. Did you ever see Psycho? Yes. Mm, yes. I, I saw. Do you, remember, do you remember the shower scene in Psycho? <laughs> you know, the music? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Do you remember why Vivian Lee is taking a shower in that moment? Do you remember why in the movie she's taking a shower? It just reminds me of this. Yeah, she, she she takes a shower after she talks to Norman Bates and mm -hmm. her and Norman have a moment where they both recognize that they've done well she at least recognizes that she's done something wrong Norman's talking about how he doesn't like people and, and stuffing animals is a better way to deal with life because they're whatever they're beautiful they don't talk back or animals are simple people are nasty and she has this recognition she did something wrong because she ran away. And she mm -hmm. takes a shower. And it's like this moment it, in the film. It's like a visual purification. Mm -hmm. Not only is she vulnerable, and that's when she gets attacked, but she's like it's like a visual representation of this moment of purification. She did something wrong. She realized she did something wrong and she's about to return home and at that moment she takes a shower mm -hmm. as a visual symbol that she's purified herself mm -hmm. I can't help but think that it's not an accident that they're out on the ocean that there's a purification going on mm -hmm. and his swimming trunks are blue because somehow he represents purity and he must and he says oh I like your blue bathing suit but her blue bathing suit is yellow so he associates her with purity and they're in the blue water which is purifying or innocent mm -hmm. and uh, so there's the color blue which I wonder is, is not significant in some way so mm -hmm. just something else that occurs to me <laughs> I'm probably completely wrong I don't know <laughs> just the opposite, opposite color of, of blue is a uh, is, uh, uh, Mm. Uh, yellow. Man, right. man, oh, red. Yellow. What's the opposite? Or, uh, or, um, in the first scene uh, right. of this story, uh, wife uh, ma manicure, ma right. wife colored the manicure. Uh -huh. Yes. It's the maybe opposite. Oh, uh, it's red. Yeah, she's red, getting red. red, red yeah, color. yeah, yeah. That's yes. true. Very uh, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, husband has the blue. <laughs> blue trunks, <laughs> um, blue swimming suit. Uh, the wife has a red colored manicure. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple symbolized the feeling of these. Yeah, and, and visually uh, it sets them apart. If you're, if you're picturing the story, she's associated with red, he's associated with blue. I don't remember what color robe he had on. I can't remember if we saw the color, but he takes it off and he's got blue underneath. Um, Wait a, po a point. Just say again? To mind. Uh, one point came to mind now. Ah, go for it. Uh, the whole story uh, of uh, this man with the girl was a lie. 
How so? Because he was talking about banana fish. Right, right, okay. There is no banana fish at all. That means he is lying here. That's why he killed himself. But he's, he's flirting with her. Yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, he never lied probably before. But mm -hmm. in this time, with this uh, innocent uh, girl, mm -hmm. he kept lying, lying about the banana fish, about this story. He he make he made it up. Right. Do that you... why, that's why uh, he said it is a perfect day for banana fish to die. Probably that's why he killed himself. Do you think that? Do you think that he's? I, I, ups I think he didn't lie. He just to tell the story about uh, banana fish to the girl. No. <laughs> of course, mm -hmm. it it is a it is a fiction, but I think he he didn't think he didn't think that he is telling a lie. By the so, way, don't forget the famous Picasso quote that art is a lie in service of the truth. So, <laughs> even if he's lying, maybe <laughs> he's trying to get at a deeper point. But don't you think that if he's if he's disappointed? Yes, uh, Go as ahead. You, yeah. As you, as, you, as you said, because in this story, in the story of uh, banana fish, there is uh, some kind of uh, truth, uh, some kind of real feeling of uh, his real feeling. Uh, that is, that's the uh, there is a there there is a some 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 clue uh, that that makes him uh, make decision. Of, of killing himself. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, the story, Banana Fish, uh, it, it, it's kind of true, not, not a lie for him, mm -hmm. at least for him. That's my opinion. And, and maybe, maybe what, what, if anything is distressing him, perhaps it's the fact that only through this fantasy can he have such a perfect moment? If he were just, if he were going to tell the little girl, I just got back from the war and I had to kill a hundred people and see my friend. I mean, if he were going to tell her the truth, they wouldn't have much of a relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's this ir ironic moment that, that only through creating this fiction do they have this perfect moment. And maybe he thinks that all perfect moments are fiction. And uh, I don't know, but somehow. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know the in both interpretation and you know the 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 reason why human commit suicide the isolation mm -hmm. he felt a strong feeling of isolation alienation right mm -hmm. even sure. though, uh, you know, even though the girl uh, telling not uh, telling the truth or true story but uh, he, she left reg without re regret and if she is lying absolutely she he disappointed. Mm -hmm. So he, nobody understand my feeling or something like that. So uh, isolation. Uh, well, he's isolated from society. Is it, uh, he's isolated from his wife. Absolutely. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, the only but, real. Uh, how, sorry. Go ahead. How, how do you explain about the title of this story, Aka? Uh, mm -hmm. Perfect today. If you, uh, if you, perfect he, today too. If, if yeah. he killed himself <laughs> uh, because of uh, isolation, why such a title of this story? Uh, perfect day to commit suicide for him. <laughs> mm. I don't. Uh, maybe satire, kind of irony. Irony. Yeah. Sounds like comical, but uh, on the on the surface it's comical, but uh, in the depths it's very heavy theme. This story has a heavy theme for and, human feeling. Yeah. And isn't it isn't it that it's he's he's not gonna have a day. He thinks probably he'll never have a day as perfect as this. And so end it on a high note. <laughs> Just an idea. I don't know. Um, well, I think we're going to have to stop. Um, I I I, I want to find. I had this list of of literary allusions too, but I don't know where it is. I can't find it. So if I find it, um, uh, I will let you know. I can't find it. I, I give up, <laughs> but I'll post it for you. <laughs> it's a deep uh, card. <laughs> yeah. no, no, it's, it's an interesting story. I took some notes, but I was throwing this and together. And Sarincha himself is very mystical. He never, maybe very rare to accept the interview. Oh. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, he was very reclusive. 
And this year, 2014, they just discovered three new stories that had never been published, and they were leaked to the internet. So you can actually read three stories that had never been published the whole time, just this year. Uh, he apparently has other manuscripts that he wrote that he just never released, never got published. The more famous he got, the more he, more reclusive he became. And uh, and he he, you know, he he died not too long ago. It wasn't that long ago. He li he was very old. So he basically got famous when he was really young. Disappeared after publishing these books for like 50 years. And when they, when they, when he died, they they already knew that there were manuscripts. But as far as I'm, as far as I know, oh, there's a there's a documentary that just came out very recently. A guy um, uh, tried to make this documentary for like 20 years. He put it together over 20 years, did all these interviews, and I don't know if it's out yet or if it came out a while ago. And I think he also was able to get the books published or he's going to get them published, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I remember reading something about it. So, so there may be more Salinger to come. Yeah. Well, on that note, I'm going to leave you. Uh, I'll be back on Monday for the business class, next Saturday for more short stories. By the way, if there's anything in particular you want to work on, or let me, you know, just send me a message and I'll see what I can do. I've got a bunch of things coming up. I don't know which I have to see. I have to see what kind of time and material I have, but I try to get, try to prepare it and give you some uh, intelligent questions <laughs> and maybe some interpretation as well. So I'll see what material I have best out there for the next one. So I've got a few different ideas. But feel, any, feel free to send any requests to these links in the chat window, and I will be looking at Motoharu Sono, Sano, Yes. Uh, <laughs> later today. <laughs> I'll be looking that up. So, have a good weekend, everyone. Questions or comments, send me a message, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Have a good new. Bye. Thank you for coming. Have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs>